This week, a software flaw exposed most Dell computers to remote hacking. I just love the way they phrase this stuff. Uh, Israel has neutralized a cyber attack by blowing up a building with hackers. An expert found that hundreds of vulnerable Jen Jenkins plugins um, are vulnerable. A bug in Mirai code allows crashing the C2 servers and how researchers discovered a highly stealthy Microsoft Exchange backdoor. In the expert commentary, Jason Wood from Paladin Security joins us to talk about how Japan is developing a computer virus to fight cyber attacks. All that and more on this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. Let the team at Black Hills Information Security test your defenses. With over 10 years of experience in penetration testing, red teaming, and threat hunting, the testers at Black Hills will help you find the holes in your security before the bad guys do. The team at Black Hills cares about educating and sharing their knowledge by creating countless blogs, open source tools, and webcasts for you to learn more about the tradecraft of pen testing and red teaming. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash BHIS to join their mailing list and view the latest blogs and webcasts from Black Hills Information Security. Welcome to Hack Naked News, episode 217 from May 7th, 2019. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Register for our upcoming webcast with Observe It and Kaseya by going to securityweekly.com forward slash webcast. If you missed any of our previous webcasts, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash on demand. And now for the news this week, a pre-installed software flaw exposes most Dell computers to remote hacking. If Excuse me. All right. Now I'm ready. If the victim has the Dell support assistant software installed, it can be exploited by the user visiting a malicious website in the browser. All of the proof of concept code is available, including a demo video. Dell has patched the issue describing the vulnerability as follows. An unauthenticated attacker sharing the network access layer with the vulnerable system I think they mean in the browser can be compromised the can compromise the vulnerable system by tricking a victim into downloading and executing arbitrary executables via support assistant client from an attacker hosted site. Um, multinational it says multinational computer technology company Dell in an advisory. Uh, my take on this is pre-installed software from your hardware vendor. It tends to contain vulnerabilities. I really mean it's almost always kind of crappy. Um, and we've covered many vulnerabilities of this type over the years. I do prefer to do a clean install of the OS, uh, actually, and in, in run Linux rather than Windows. Uh, I highly recommend that you do the same, even if you're in an enterprise, having your own image without that crummy software is probably a good idea. Israel has neutralized a cyber attack by blowing up a building with hackers. This will make folks think twice about hacking other countries, especially Israel. The Israeli Defense Force claims to have neutralized an attempted cyber attack by launching airstrikes on a building in the Gaza Strip from where it says hackers uh, were originating from. As shown in a video tweeted by the IDF, the building in the Gaza Strip, which Israeli fighter drones have now destroyed, was reportedly the headquarters for Palestinian Hamas military intelligence, where a cyber unit of hackers which uh, was allegedly trying to penetrate Israel's cyberspace. So, more of the story, don't try and hack Israel or you probably get blown up so and it is we love is israel and israeli people they're awesome to work with uh and hang out with so don't hack them high severity printer logic flaws allow remote code execution it seems there is no interest from the vendor in this story to fix these flaws printer logic's print management software allows businesses to deploy and use remote printers sounds great Unfortunately, it has three flaws which could allow unauthenticated remote attackers to remotely execute arbitrary code. Wow, love saying that. Uh, with admin privileges to boot. No patch is currently available according to an advisory printer logic versions up and to including 18.3.1.96 are vulnerable to multiple attacks. 
The PrinterLogic agent running a system does not validate the PrinterLogic management portal's SSL certificate, validate PrinterLogic update packages, or sanitize web browser input, making it a green field for attackers uh, to exploit and take control of your printers. Expert found hundreds of vulnerable Jenkins plugins. It may be some time before we see security maturity develop for the DevOps tool chain, utilities, and software. As Victor Gazdog, NTC Group security consultant, has manually tested hundreds of plugins and discovered security flaws in over a hundred of them. Jenkins plugins allow you to implement additional functionality like Active Directory authentication or solve reoccurring tasks such as executing a static code an analyzer or copying and uh, a compiled software to a SIF share. Most of the issues uh, are password storage in plain text and cross-site request forgery issues with missing permission checks that could be exploited by attackers to steal credentials. Mysterious attackers, I'm not sure what qualifies attackers as mysterious. I would think most attackers maintain some level of mysteriousness. Uh, anyway, they're wiping Git repositories and asking for a ransom. And speaking of DevOps environments, authentication is key. Get it. Experts believe the ransomware is targeting poorly secured repositories and doesn't seem to exploit specific vulnerabilities in Git repositories, likely password spraying. The victims reported that the ransom note includes a reference to gitsbackups.com. Crooks are demanding $560 worth of Bitcoin. Uh, a victim has been quoted as saying, I was working on a project and suddenly... All of the commits disappeared and were replaced with a single text file. Stefan Gabos uh, was using uh, Source Tree, uh, and he wrote on Stack Exchange. He also says to recover your law. Oh, the note says to recover your lost code and avoid leaking it. Send us 0 0.1 Bitcoin to our Bitcoin address. A bug in the Mirai source code allows crashing of C2 servers. I find much irony in that Mirai contains a buffer overflow condition due to lack of proper bounds checking. Uh, an expert pointed out that the Mirai C2 server crashes when someone connects to it using a username with a sequence of 1025 uh, A characters or a string uh, greater than 1025. Analyzing part of the Mirai source code because we can do that, which is available on GitHub. The experts, experts notice the username is passed to the read line custom function. This function declares a fixed buffer size length of 1024. Uh, for this reason, providing an input greater of 1024 will cause the module to crash, of course. An attempt to fish my Amazon Web Services account. Warn your users not to fall for this stuff as AWS and other services uh, all have similar style phishing attacks that are out there in the wild. They're pretty easy to spot. Most of the phishing emails uh, seen are fairly rudimentary, often targeting users of the same websites, Facebook, Apple, PayPal, or a variety of online banks, but also get AWS and other services. Um, it's not unusual that the emails are less convincing um, the email purporting to come from Amazon Web Services claiming that, as and I quote, unless I confirm I have given my correct contact information for Domains Who Is record, a website I administer could be suspended. <coughs> Excuse me. Researchers discover a highly stealthy Microsoft Exchange backdoor. Uh, Light Neuron, as the backdoor has been dubbed by ESET researchers, is remotely controlled via emails using steganography uh, inside PDFs and JPEG attachments, is believed to have been used by the Turla Cyber Espionage Group. Microsoft Exchange allows extending its functionalities using transport agents that can process, modify, and modify all email messages going through the mail server. Transport agents can be created by Microsoft, third-party vendors, or directly within the organization. So knowing that, um, the backdoor can block emails, modify their body, recipient and subject, create a new email, replace attachments, and recreate and resend email from the Exchange server itself, and bypass spam filters, of course. It can create email attachment logs, encrypt emails, store them, and parse JPEG and PDF attachments, and decrypt uh, and execute commands found in them. Kind of scary. You want to get patching your and reconfiguring some of your exchange servers to prevent against this attack. We'll take a short break and come back with expert commentary from Jason Wood of Paladin Security. Stay tuned.
The question is simple. Have any of the systems on my network been compromised? The answer is harder than it should be. Enter AI Hunter. Active Countermeasures has automated and streamlined techniques used by the best pen testers and threat hunters in the industry to create AI Hunter, a network threat hunting solution that does the first pass of a hunt for you to identify systems that are most likely to be compromised and scores the results on a scale from 0 to 100. You can then research those systems in depth with AI Hunter. Focus your valuable time on the systems that need your expertise with AI Hunter. Sign up for a personal demo today at securityweekly.com forward slash ACM. Welcome back. We're here with Jason Wood talking about how Japan is developing a cute computer virus to fight cyber attacks. The question being, will it be mysterious or not? It's mysteriously mysterious <laughs> because we don't have that much information. Gotcha. <laughs> Oddly enough. Um, I actually ran into this post last week on uh, a blog post written up by Graham Cluley. And I thought it was an interesting read. He spent a lot of time looking at this and asking some questions. And honestly, a lot of them were the same that I was, I was thinking about as I was reading this. Uh, but if, today I found another post, this one on ZDNet, and that one had some links to websites in Japan uh, that I was able to read through thanks to Google Translate because my Japanese is non-existent. Uh, but it discussed Japan's decision to create what they're describing as defensive malware uh, to use as a deterrence against attacking the country. Now, one of the thoughts, it, the article talks about it almost like it's a singular tool, but as you're reading through it, it seems to be kind of a suite, which would make sense because uh, different situations are going to need I, different, I just really different hope apps. they call it Mr. Roboto. But Mr. Roboto, maybe that's just me. Could be <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's so what's interesting to me is they're calling this a virus and I start thinking self-replicating. And that, that, you know, my first thought when I read this, these articles was, yeah, like this isn't going to go sideways um, and have some unexpected consequences for it. Uh, basically what they're doing right now is they've, they've created a contract. It's being written right now by contractors for the Japanese government. They're expecting it to be completed by the end of this fiscal year. Um, and they're stating that uh, the tools are not supposed to be used in offensive operations, only deployed in a counterattack, my quote on that one, to an, as a counterattack to an intrusion. So, they're they're emphasizing the idea that they're not supposed to be going out and using this in a in an offensive we want to go get somebody type of thing or or commit espionage with it or or who knows. I think Israel's um, um tactics are far more effective provided you can validate that they are the actual attackers uh bombing them it's probably better deterrent. Yeah, as far as deterrence goes, you know, one of the thoughts I had was, you know, uh, there's a lot of countries that have tools like the, you know, mm -hmm. like this, and there's an awful lot of hacking that goes on them. U.S., U.K., Russia, China, you know, stuff. So I don't know that it's going to be much in the way of deterrence. Of course, um, there are limits to dropping a bomb. I mean, I noticed that you notice that Israel dropped it on Hamas and not mm -hmm. Turkey. Uh, which would turn into a much wider issue. Mm -hmm. Now, so, if this does uh, it is executing a, a counter attack and it does save you from future attacks, do you get to say "Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto"? You know, the articles didn't say that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why they didn't bring that up, but they didn't. They didn't mention it. That's why I'm um, here. Bring that that's stuff up. Why you're here. <laughs> so yeah, Graham asked a number of questions. And, and then, like I said, this is kind of where my thoughts went. Um, you know, one, how do you control this thing if it is self-replicating or one of the tools is self-replicating? Uh, what happens when it starts attacking systems that you weren't expecting? Uh, you have to figure out that you're really going after the, the attacker mm -hmm. and not kind of a, uh, a victim in the middle who's being used as a, as a stepping off point. And that's certainly something we see all the time in attacks you know you, bad guys aren't using their own infrastructure for this they're either building stuff they can burn or um 
going through somebody else. With the self-replicating thing, I thought, you know, it would be kind of get out of hand where if you go after somebody thinking that they're the attacker and you infect a company in a country that is not Japan and that doesn't like Japan very much, how does that play out? Um, and one of the thoughts I thought you know, that, that occurred to me was how are they going to go about the decision to deploy these tools? I mean, who has the authority to give the approval for, as they're calling it, a counterattack? Uh, how are the politics going to play into this? How do you even do it in a timely fashion? You know, one thought I had was maybe they're responding to something and it's not real-time response, but it's more of a scenario where they gather information from the, the forensics, feed it over to Intel to figure out who it was, and then they go after them in a counterattack that starts to look like an offensive operation as they go after these guys in a separate, you know, weeks later or something like that. Um, so I could be totally wrong. Obviously, it could be deployed in the middle of an attack. Who knows? Uh, what I think is interesting about all of this, particularly you know Paul's comments uh, story earlier about uh, Israel's response to Hamas, is seeing how governments are starting to openly uh, recognize and respond to intrusions and look at de responding in kind or escalating it in the, Israel's case to... Uh, using bombs. U.S. has done this in the past as well. There was a, a drone strike done to get the individual who's reading uh, ISIL's uh, attacker groups. So um, we're definitely seeing some escalation here. I remember when we started talking about the cyber war years ago, people were saying it was BS, it was real, it was all kinds of stuff. And now it's starting to look much more real and conventional in, in a number of ways. So an interesting article to go check out. Um, Particularly, like I said, as, as things are changing, I think it's good to be informed of what uh, different governments are doing and their, their views of how to respond to these sorts of events. Fantastic. Thank you, Jason. And thank you to everyone for listening and watching. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs>